of Ohana's allowed per lot, the size of uncovered decks. For the first time, it allows Ohana's to have covered decks. For the first time, it allows Ohana's to have garages, because previously they were only allowed a single car carport. Yes. <coughs> it allows them in the interim district, which wasn't clear before, and it prohibits new B&Bs and short-term rental homes in Ohana's. Existing permitted B&Bs and STRHs can continue to operate and they can be renewed, but no new ones. Um, and I see a lot of you taking pictures. I can, uh, I think I have emailed this. You can, you're welcome to forward that out also, to folks. I'm just gonna mention that I am recording this and I'm gonna upload it into the blue file. Great, thank you. And it's important to note that this does not apply to ag land, okay? Um, there are a number of changes we do want to make to the Ag Zoning District. Um, I don't think there's anyone who has said we want the size of that second farm dwelling to stay at 1,000 square feet, so we will be looking at that down the road, but for now, that second farm dwelling in Ag is still 1,000 square feet. Now getting into the details of 19.35, the maximum gross floor area, so the size of the Ohana's, increased by 20%. So what's underlined is new. So it used to be that you could only have an Ohana on lots that were 7,500 square feet or larger. Now you can have them on any size lot. And that's gonna be your starting size at 500 square feet. Then all of these, these were the same categories from before, but the size was increased 20% to each one. And the definition of maximum gross floor area was clarified because we would get this question all the time because that 500 or 600 square feet is precious. What gets counted in it and what doesn't? And we had to interpret the definition strictly and now we've loosened it a little bit so it excludes your laundry area in your carport or out on your lanai. Um, it excludes your covered water heater, um, but it does still include storage and other things that really are part of living area. So this was, um, this is a clarification. This, this clarification is quite different than what was in the code previously. Previously it said pretty much anything under roof. So that could include outside storage and outside laundry or laundry in the carport. The number of accessory dwellings per lot has also changed. Unfortunately on Molokai and Lanai, you still only get your one on 7,500 square feet or larger. But on Maui, as I mentioned before, you get one on any lot less than 7,500 square feet and two on any lot 7,500 square feet or larger. <laughs> That's a significant change. Now, we believe that this is going to serve to just make legal a lot of these that are already in existence. <laughs> but that's a good thing. They can come out from the shadows. Um, but we also think that this will help our affordable housing crunch literally one unit is a at a time. Um, where law-abiding people who haven't yet converted their garage into another unit will now be able to do so. There are practical restrictions though. Um, building setbacks still need to be complied with, parking on site still needs to be provided, and there are infrastructure <coughs> restrictions like on any dwelling for wastewater, water, street with fire access. Um, that gets reviewed during the building permit process. Um, but there may be lots that just by their configuration and by their existing build out may not be able to benefit from this. So you, we just have to see how that plays out lot by lot. Um, but if you have folks who are interested in taking advantage of this, before they put together plans, drawings, spend any money in it, they might want to check with these infrastructure agencies to say, if I put in a building permit for another Ohana, will you sign off on it? Do I have, uh, is there sewer capacity? Will, can I continue to be served by water? Is the access road wide enough for fire control? Um, the size of uncovered open decks, patios, lanais, and walkways was also increased. So again, we never used to allow ohanas on the smaller lots, so they can have 200 square foot uncovered deck, and then all of these, the existing square footage, and now the increase. Uncovered. 
These are uncovered. Now covered decks, which were not allowed before, now you can have them. And they're the same size as the uncovered decks. So now you can have covered and uncovered decks. So you can have both. You can have both. And so is this, the covered decks, are they considered part of the 500 square feet? No. no. Okay. No. Separate. So if you do have, it used to be, that's a great question, that is something that we would count toward the gross floor area. Mm -hmm. But now you have the separate allotment, so you can have that separate outdoor living area, if you will. And some of this came about, um, the, the whole idea is to make them more livable. So um, can existing <coughs> um, Ohanas be repermitted um, to have the bigger square footage? Yeah, an existing okay. Ohana that met all the prior requirements can now add some interior questions. square footage, can add, you know, add a new deck. Um, and uh, cumulative floor area, which uh, applies to the deck size, uh, again, excludes covered walkways or landings up to four feet wide under eaves that are not part of a deck. So if you have your ohana where the eaves obviously extend out and you have your path from your driveway to your front door that's under roof, doesn't get counted toward, in, toward interior or deck area. But if that path goes up onto a deck that leads to the door, then once it's up on the deck, that does get included. So we just look at the layout. <coughs> if it's just the walking path to the front door, then it doesn't get counted. And this will be, you know, it'll take us a little bit of time to work through the kinks, but that, that's, the, that's the idea. Um, Off-street parking, I think I mentioned before, you still have to provide parking on site. So one space for an Ohana. But the change is that this can be in a garage. Before, Ohanas were allowed a single car carport with a size limit. Now it can be a carport or a garage and can be larger. And the fear was always that it's gonna get enclosed. If you allow a garage, it's gonna get enclosed. Um, and that has happened, we know it's happened, but we think housing is more important than right. that regulation. <laughs> So, uh, as I touched upon before, you cannot have a bed and breakfast home uh, or a short-term rental home in any Ohana. So here, chapter 19.64 is the section of the zoning code that regulates bed and breakfast homes, and 19.65 is the section, is the chapter that regulates short-term rental homes. So, <coughs> the bill that passed at the end of last year changed 1935, which is Ohana's, but it also had to change other sections of the code so that they were in sync. Excuse me. Yeah. If you have a large house and you're using that part for some of the vacation rentals, and you have a cottage, and you rent the cottage out long term, is that permissible? Um, if you have a long term tenant in the cottage and short term in the main house, yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, can, can we just hold questions till the end, please? So we don't get sorry. You Thank notice you. it's only the brokers. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's because That's because you're all going to be asking us later. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I mentioned before, existing permitted B&Bs and STRH um, can continue operating and be renewed. Um, and if we have applications in the pipeline, um, we can continue to process those. But new ones that come in the door today in Ohana's, but in the main dwellings, yes, they can still happen. Hmm. And the goal there is really for Ohana's to be used as what their original intent was, was for Ohana and for long-term uh, housing. Um, the areas in 1935 that were not changed were that Ohana's have to have their own entrance. Um, they can't have an interior connection to the main house. But they were not changed. Those were not changed. That's the way it was. That's the way it still is. Um, and again, where does this apply? Um, to the interim zoning district, to the residential districts, to the rural districts. Rural gets really tricky. So if you have questions about rural, you should call and find out. We already have emails going back and forth with us in the state. Because state law has a density in the state rural district of one house per half acre. The 
county has always allowed two per half acre, so it's all over the place. So we're probably going to have to get a determination from the state, and we think that they're going to say it's okay to have two. So that's kind of in flux. So um, even though for now, as far as the county is concerned, you can have Ohana's, the state is um, not in sync with that. Um, the urban reserve district, which you don't see too much of, um, um, allows Ohana's, but still only one. And again, this does not apply to ag. And again, here are some links that would be helpful uh, for the whole Maui County Code um, for ordinances. So if you hear about a new bill passing, the list of ordinances are posted up on the county's website. Um, this is the planning department website. Um, and we try to keep it relatively current with what we call hot topics on the main page. Um, our digital zoning map, that's something new that we have where you can finally, finally <laughs> see what a property zoning is. And also state law if you're interested. Um, so there are a number of things that I have all these shortcuts on my browser. Um, uh, but a good place to start if you're looking for anything is here, www.mauicounty.gov. And then from that point, you can find all different county departments, their <coughs> administrative rules, their boards and commissions. And that's wow. me. Wow. Yay. <laughs>